All right, back to it. Freeze. Back at it again with the white rabbits. Freeze right. Damn. All right, let's talk about a little theory then. So we got the nomenclature there. Theory. Theory. A propeller is a rotating wing. I'm going to write propeller, and then I'm not going to write anymore. I'm going to say prop. Propeller is a rotating wing. You know, like a helicopter, except going around in a vertical manner. Yeah. It converts. I think this is an oral practical question. What's the purpose of a propeller? Um, it converts. Not a, It converts. Horsepower to thrust. <laughs> All right, then we have the blade element theory. Blade element theory. In short, that's the blade element theory. Each section, and you don't necessarily, we talked about stations, now I'm talking about sections. What, because it says butt on the bottom? I can only assume. That's why he's but, left, I'm left with he's left. It's the butt. Chain reaction. Just because it's the blade butt does not mean you can have allowable cracks. <laughs> it's still. No cracks, you, but you do have a little hole right there in the middle, so it's... <laughs> so the sludge comes out. <laughs> All right. So in this, so it plays blade element theory. It's not so much a theory, it is. So you can see in this particular slide, they've taken six inch sections of the propeller. Not to say that every six inches is how you do it. It's like every little section, which can be made up of, you could take a one inch slice, a six inch, a half inch slice. But when you do that, you will notice that each section of the blade and what they did here is every six inches took a, you can be okay back there. He's like still like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <think he is. laughs> you will notice that the blade not only changes in thickness, but it also changes in the angle. So if we were to draw an angle, the cord line, we could see how much it changes. If we could do it straight, it'd be even more helpful. So you can see how it changes, right? And it, and it has to do that for a reason. And we're gonna talk about that reason. It's gonna hurt just a little bit when I tell you about that. Like, huh, what? But just understand that it's, it's different. And it's different because when I explained to you when we read the thing from Orville Wright, when we talked about the speed of the propeller is one thing, and then the forward momentum changes everything. Well, you have to realize that the speed of the propeller, we can talk RPM, and everything is moving at the same revolutions per minute. But if we want to talk miles per hour, feet per minute, it's very different, right? The hub is moving a lot slower than out here. Out here is near the speed of sound. Down here is quite slow. So if you have, you can't even imagine a wing that's going through the air where part of it's moving fast and part of it's moving slow. It just doesn't happen. So you have to consider that. And that's why it changes, uh, the blade stations change thickness, cord, angle of the uh, blade angle, all of this changes, and that's why. So we'll look at that more in a little bit. So blade element theory, and I got way too much going on here. Um, so to, to use this theory, then we'd say each section of the blade is made up of small airfoils. So each section of the blade is made up of small airfoils, which is kind of to say that each little section is its own airfoil. It's different than the one next to it. And that was done by a, an engineer who said this section right here should look just like this to be efficient. Well, okay, let's move down six inches. Well, this is going to look a whole lot different. 
So, and that's why blades look different. You know, who is working on the one on the bench? You guys working? Uh, yeah, you guys are like, well, there's these templates that you slide over. Like, we can't get the template slid on. Well, yeah, because the blade is thin and it gets fat and it gets thin again. Take it apart. Move it. Um, so each section, each section can be any size. Can be any size. But for simplicity, assume each section is one inch. Oh, the slide had it at six. Any size, but um, for simplicity, assume each section is one inch. Now, if we do it one inch, that corresponds with blade stations, right? Each station is one inch. One inch. So you say each station is its own little individual thing. All right, so this theory here, this theory states that the many airfoil sections or elements are formed together to create an airfoil blade that can be that can create thrust when rotated around a central plane. So this theory states states that the mini airfoils airfoil so mini airfoil sections or elements. Limits are formed together to create an airfoil. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> or blade. That can create thrust when rotated around a central plane. Now, that's not a type of plane, like a Cessna plane or a Piper plane, a central plane. So, you know. Central point. Got it? Okay, good. I know. Was it Michael and I? We flew, we just went to warm up the airplane, and we came back and we landed, and some guy was coming out, and he's parked right next to my hangar, and he's sitting there with his engine running. And I'm like, I need to get right there. And he's like waiting for me, and I'm waiting for him. So I finally got on the radio. I'm like, hey, little, there's a little Comanche guy. I'm like, hey, I need to park right there. You're my parking spot and get through there. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll just go around you. So I'm just, what do you say? I'm just looking for a friend. Oh, I, <laughs> I got the radar, I'm like, yeah, aren't we all, though? <laughs> <laughs> when he came back, he's like, but I'm done. Yeah. All right, caught up. Each element is designed to operate at its best angle of attack. In other words, live its best life. I can just start talking to you guys like, you know, your age. Each angle is designed to live its best life. Each element is designed to operate at its best angle, designed to operate at its best angle of attack. What's angle of attack mean? Relative wind. Yeah. Ward line and the relative wind. So in other words, I'm I'm flying a you know high performance fighter jet, and I've got a 100 mile an hour wind coming this way, but I'm doing 500 miles an hour straight up. What's the relative wind? Zero. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty close to 500 miles an hour this way. This is going to be, I should have said 20, and 20 this way and 500 this way. It's, the relative wind is coming right down that wing. 
uh, at best angle of attack. Let me see, where am I at? Since each section moves at a different speed. Okay, so each section moves at a different speed. I'm talking speed is miles per hour, not RPM. Follow? Because they all move at the same RPM, right? Yeah. Okay, got to, hopefully you get this. But each one's moving at a different speed, miles per hour. So each section may have a different chord. Thickness and angle. Each section may have a different chord. That means the width. Thickness. That means thickness or angle, which is the blade angle, which translates into angle of attack. Okay, the tips move much faster than the hub. Move faster than the hub. And note that the RPM is the same for all sections. Different speed, same RPM. All right, this gradual change in blade sections, how they change as we go through, is known as pitch distribution. Section angles, blade section angles is known as what? Pitch distribution. Yep. This is the noticeable twist in blades. Thrust. What makes a prop work? It spins. Yes, aerodynamics Bernoulli. is the cur not wrong answer. <laughs> Bernoulli. What else? All right, so I'm going to put this on according to. According to Q and A's. Thrust is produced by a rotating propeller in the same way lift is produced by a wing. An area of decreased pressure is produced immediately in front of the propeller. Aerodynamic forces cause the propeller to move into this area of low pressure. That's according to Q&A. You want me to write all that? You know you do. I can abbreviate it. Thrust is produced, produced by a rotating wing oh, by a, sorry, rotating propeller. Propeller in the same way, 
same way lift is produced by a wing same way lift is produced by a wing which is an area of decreased pressure uh, is produced immediately in front of propeller. And of course, aerodynamic forces cause the propeller to move into low pressure. You like it? Yes. All right. Now, the reason why I put like according to the Q&A, because I don't want you to walk out of here going, well, that's what Kevin said. Because there's a lot more going on in that we're moving a mass of air and we have thrust. And so I don't really feel that that is a thrust. That's more of a, what, strictly Bernoulli's principle. We're moving into a low pressure. And it would be much like saying that a wing only works off Bernoulli's principle and ignore everything else. So I will add this one then, because I think this is important. Um, not everybody, but some textbooks um, add Newton's third law or for some of you the third suggestion which is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction And the two are directed along the same straight line. All right, so what's action one? For every action, there's an equal and opposite. What's the opposite reaction we're looking for? Thrust. Plane to go forward. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what is the, so we can start with, what is action one? Forward. Action one, acceleration of a massive air by the blade towards the rear of the plane. Oh, the air itself moving. You ever stood behind a plane with the uh, propeller spinning? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of thrust back there. A lot of wind being pushed backwards, so acceleration. Acceleration of a mass of air by the blade, by the blade toward the rear of the airplane. Uh, we could assume or think about 200 pounds of air. All right. So we accelerate 200 pounds of air towards the rear of the plane. That's action one. What is action two? Action two. So that was, remember, there's every action, there's an equal opposite. So the opposite reaction then is? Pushing the air, pulling the plane. Okay. The plane is then pulled forward. You push 200 back, so you got 200 forward. Plane is pulled forward with 200 pounds of pulling force. So we put those two together, and it sounds just like a wing to me, but I don't think that you can leave out one of either one of those. It's all part of the same equation. 
just like a wing. You do have Bernoulli acting. You do have this um, low pressure in the front, just like you have a low pressure on top of a wing. You do have Newton's third law, equal and opposite reaction. You have the, the angle of attack coming up and striking a wing bounces back down. So that bounced down, and you have the wing being pushed up. Same thing with a, a propeller, moving a mass of air forward, which drives rearward, which drives the plane forward. All right, that's your theory. Now I'm done with that. Um, this is going to hurt a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of pain in the next few minutes. <laughs> um, once you get it, it's like, well, that's very simple. Why, why would that be a hard thing? But make sure that you, you get this. So blade angle, blade angle. Let's talk about blade angles. What is a blade angle? Blade angle is the angle between, angle between the cord line Angle between the cord. I'm going to say cord. Often, just so you know, often um, the face. Often the face. But not always. And I say that because the face is the part that the mechanic sees from the front or the pilot sees? Okay. Is that part rounded or flat? It's very flat. And so if it's very flat, it just happens to almost line up with the trailing edge to the leading edge, or at least it's parallel to the cord line. And so you can easily substitute a cord line that you can't get to with the face because the face actually is flat and it is in line with the cord line. So it's very simple to measure it, at the angles that is. So it's the angle between the cord, which is often the face, but not always, um, of a particular blade station, of a blade station. And there are many. Remember, they're, they're done in inches, but we could also do fractions. Station five and a half, if you wanted, I suppose. I don't see that, but you could. Um, a particular blade station and the plane of rotation. And the plane of rotation. Which, again, is to say it is the angle. We could say the angle of the face. Not always, but we can just do that. The angle that face is making in reference to the plane of rotation. Now, thankfully, if you look at a propeller, this surface right here of the hub is usually parallel to the plane of rotation. It's a flat surface up there, and the blade's going around this way. So if you could measure the hub, call that zero angle, and then next to it, the blade is doing this, well, you can just measure the difference between this angle and that angle, and you're going to pick it up. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That was with me so far. Okay. i got to figure out where I'm going to lose you, because I'm going to lose some of you. Same thing here, these lines that I drew, right? That is the blade angle. And let's see here. We're going to talk about different things. Sometimes we'll say pitch when we mean blade angle. And that's the way mechanics talk. And so you kind of got to get used to it. And I would absolutely never want to correct somebody unless it was really important to the conversation. But if it's a fellow mechanic and they're talking about, well, you know, the, um, the blade angle here is set to this and this blade angle um, versus somebody who said the pitch here and the pitch there. And the pitch is actually something else. Uh, but it's used interchangeably. So just be aware of that. So don't get all hung up on it. Wait a minute, you said pitch. Did you mean blade angle? Um, most of the time it's, it's interchangeable. The proper thing to say is blade angle when you're talking about these angles. All right, so blade angle. Where am I here? Blade angle, that's what it is. All right, to create thrust, to create thrust, the blade must be set at a certain angle to the plane of rotation. So to create thrust, uh, a blade... A blade must be set at a certain angle, must be set at a certain angle 
to the plane of rotation, to the plane of rotation. Now, I will add that, yes, that's, that's true. The blade must be set to a certain angle to the plane of rotation. So somebody would write that in a book, an overhaul manual, and that's one of the things you're going to do is you're going to have this fixed pitch propeller and you'll be checking all of the blade angles because they must be at a certain um, angle to the plane of rotation because some engineer has figured out that this is what the angle needs to be on this prop that goes on this engine that goes on this plane to make the thing go forward. Follow? So somebody's already figured that out and what they had to figure out was the angle of attack. So, right? Somebody said, okay, I need the angle of attack to be between two to four degrees here, 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 here. And the plane is going to be going forward at about this speed, and the um, RPM is going to be this. Therefore, the angle of the blade must be this to get the angle of attack. Follow? Yeah. So everything and the design here was meant because this person figured out angle of attack has to be this. I think I'm doing okay. I'm making sense to myself. And my, and my buzz wore off like before break, so this is, this is good. I shouldn't probably say that, huh? <laughs> what was that? Oh, well, I can just watch the video. He's not in it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but he didn't know that until you said it. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> About that camera. It's one of those 360. <laughs> All right, well, while, while something's happening, while rotating, while rotating in flight, each section of the blade has a motion that combines forward movement of the airplane with the rotary movement of the prop. I think I'm repeating myself a little bit. While rotating in flight, each, each section of the blade. Um, I was told I'm not supposed to drill into your head, so. What? We were talking about him and his nuts. I'm just going to write. <laughs> <laughs> Combines the forward movement of the airplane with the rotary movement of the propeller of the airplane with the rotary movement of the propeller. I forgot. In good teaching practices, you're always supposed to tell your students why this is important to know all of this stuff. So I'll tell you why this is important. Number one, you got to know it to pass the class. Number two, they're going to ask you on your oral practical all these questions. Number three, when I interviewed for this, this job, to get the full time day, it is you have to do a, a presentation, a teaching presentation, and um, they also ask you very technical questions. And one of the questions, not forget this, one of the questions was, does the angle of attack change on a fixed pitch propeller? Not something I had thought about in all the years I built engines, because it's not really relevant to your day to day operation. You need to know how to put it on properly, safety it properly, inspect them, but you don't really think about the angle of attack, so. You have to know that. Does it? Yes, yes it does. Um, all right. This is where it's going to get a little painful. Make sure I got everything. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so this brings me to number four. Was there a one, two, and a three somewhere? Yeah, you're my guy. There was no threes? Two, theory. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute, because I'm missing a page. That's why I, I, I jumped to something here, and I'm like, well, that just doesn't make sense. Oh, here it is, way back over here. Okay. 
See, good thing I checked with Michael over here. Never mind. Uh, four, four, four. Okay. It's not going to hurt. We're back to uh, less pain. All right. The blade has a path through the air like a corkscrew. <coughs> or screw, or bolt. Because I don't think it's appropriate to use the term corkscrew, because you always want to speak to your audience. And as I look out at my audience, a corkscrew is something that would, you would use for a fine bottle of wine. Most of you probably open the fridge and get it out of the box, so. <laughs> it's just <laughs> all right, so I don't know. I got a good story that involves that too, that I can tie it into airplane if you wanted to hear. We had to do a weight and balance on a uh, citation, or an aircraft, and inside the aircraft they had wine in there, and so we, uh, obviously that's not part of your weight and balance. You had to take the wine out and. And, and we had somebody working for us who was quite the snob, better than everybody else, and made it known that you had better cover the wine up because it will go bad if you let it get exposed to light. And of course, you're working around a bunch of mechanics. You know, <laughs> that's why I only drink wine that comes in a box. I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, you can... it's not wrong. If you, if it's in a box, I know. Um, oh yeah, we can go with this slide for a minute. You're going to have to kind of use your imagination and act, imagination. Um, that's not the word I want. You don't have one. So what am I saying? People say, well, I can't imagine that. I'm like, well, is that an imagination problem? Or, um, you got to work on your conceptual ideas of things. Like, for example, this is a four-bladed propeller we're looking at. And so what we're looking at is the plane of rotation going this way through the hub. Notice it's parallel to the flat part of the hub. Yeah, that's what I said before. And we're looking at the blade angle of this blade right here, which they actually have it with the face of the blade, which is flat. So there is my blade angle. Yep. yep. It is the angle between this flat piece right here. I can draw lines. Of also this face right there to this is the same angle as this to that. Okay. All right? Okay. Even though my picture doesn't look like it. Just making it parallel. Oh, okay. Just yeah. making it parallel. Yep. Okay. So be the same angle, just not quite as far out there. So plane of rotation, blade angle. So that is the blade angle. Next one. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. We're going to come back to that. That's the part that you're going to hate. The part I just said the blade has a path through the air like a corkscrew or screw. Very similar to that. The amount of bite that the blade takes is determined by the blade angle. High pitch equals big bite, low pitch equals little bite. All right, so let's talk about so that. You so low, like fine <laughs> No. <laughs> Very simple. You push the blue knob in. You want coarse threads? You pull the blue knob out. Or unless my plane is black. I don't know why Cessna made mine black, but they did. <laughs> nope. <laughs> or you simply now even in a fixed pitch propeller, like say on a on a little Cessna 150 or something, you get a choice of propellers, and you may you may want if you live in an area where you're you're flying off a grass strip that's very short, you need to fly, you need to get up quickly, you're going to have a fine pitched screw because it's going to allow a higher RPM. If you were living here at McClellan and you're flying off a 10,000 foot runway with your 150 and then you, you have your, your other one. So you get grass strip, you take off grass strip, it, high RPM, you get up, you're flying, you're going to do a whopping 85 miles an hour, right? That's really slow. So you move your plane from there to here. Now you're flying off 10,000 feet and you're getting off in the first 500 
and it's taking another three minutes to get to the end of the runway. So you think to yourself, I've got a fine pitch thread, right? I want a coarse pitch one. I'll go a little faster. So you have it pitched a little bit more, coarse thread. Now, instead of 500 feet, it takes you 1,000 feet to get off. Instead of doing 85 miles an hour, you get up to 87 miles an hour because it's a 150. <laughs> I'm being a little not generous to the 150, but it feels like it. Who has it? What is it? 150? It's about right. <laughs> it's not doing Yeah. And anybody in here had a 150 be, laugh all you want. I burn six gallons an hour. <laughs> Kevin, how much you burn an hour? Oh, All of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, take off, 18 gallons an hour. Take off is 18, cruise is about 11 or 12. Uh, unless I get up over 12,000, that's about nine. Uh, okay, so the amount of bite. The amount of bite. bite we'll call it bite. The blade takes. takes is determined determined by the blade angle. Now I kind of screwed up here on my notes and I even said it. The next thing I'd write is high pitch equals big bite. What's wrong with that statement? I'm talking blade angles, not pitches, right? So I should say High, high blade angle. Uh, equals big bite. Or low blade angle. And I wrote angel here, so that was really helpful. So I could also call that pitch, and you know what I'm talking about, yes? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, because the next statement is due to pitch distribution, and twist of blade, which we already talked about, the blade angle at one station is different from a blade angle of another station, which I think we've already said maybe two, three times. They say repetition is good for young minds. Um, let's see. It's usually different. It's usually different from the blade angle at another station. As Phil would say, if you say it one time, we're going to say that you never said it. So he has to say it like you said it. Oh, no, I just record and go, yeah, I said it. Just look at recording. Yeah, just look at recording if you don't believe me. Blade angle of a different, I think that's what I was going to say, of a different, or at another station. Well, they say you only remember 40% of what you hear. And so what I did is I wrote all my notes out and then I cut out the 60%. I, it was okay for you to forget. And I'm left with the 40% you have to remember. Perfect. So yeah, we will in a little bit. It's used interchangeably with often angle but we're gonna to get to pitch. Um, the proper use. How long until I get into that? Tomorrow. Yeah, definitely tomorrow. Oh, I got a whole section on pitch. Page seven. Whole section on pitch. Just see, okay, because he has a good point. I mean, what is pitch? I don't want to leave you in. Blade angle, technically, I hope you got, is the angle between the 
plane of rotation and the angle of the blade. Um, we use pitch interchangeably, but when you use the term pitch, you're not supposed to. Pitch has two different meanings, geometric and effective. And pitch is just like a screw or a bolt. We'd say the pitch of a bolt, right? The threads per inch, which is the pitch. How far forward that bolt goes every revolution. That is its pitch. And to equate that to a, a, a propeller, that is its geometric pitch. How far, in theory, the propeller, which makes the screw threads, how far it goes forward in one revolution. That is its pitch, geometric pitch. Its effective pitch is how far it actually moved forward. So if I'm sitting there with my airplane and I said this has an, a, a geometric pitch of, I don't know, I just make, you know, four feet per revolution, that's its geometric, but I've got my feet on the brakes, so I'm not going anywhere. Its effective pitch is zero. zero. <laughs> if I take my feet off the brakes and it moves forward at three feet instead of four, then its effective pitch is three feet, and then its efficiency is 75%, which would be about right. Uh, okay, blade angle. I got time. Yes, I do blade angle. Blade angle has a pronounced, a pronounced effect on the mass of air moved, mass of air moved, as well as, it's an important point for mechanics, as well as something. Engine RPM. So in other words, if I change the pitch or the um, blade angle of the prop, I am going to change the RPM dramatically of the engine. This is most noticeable, I don't want to say like in a constant speed where I'm adjusting the pitch, which definitely brings down the, the RPM. I mean, without a doubt, you see that when you fly. But it's, it's, I think it's an easier concept to understand when you're talking about fixed pitch <laughs> propellers. And, and I told you that, you know, one guy may want this climb prop where the static RPM is very high. And you follow static RPM is the maximum RPM you get out of the engine in a fixed pitch prop with your feet on the brakes and wide open throttle. That is your static RPM. I hate you. No, it hates me. All right, type certificate data sheet for Cessna 150. Right there, it tells you. Um, if you haven't looked at these, this is, you know, the, the major stuff here. Oops. Uh, engine limits for all operations. There's your red line, 2750. These are your props you're allowed. The Sensenitz here, the Macaulay, the Macaulay. And with these propellers, it tells you this one, not over 2470, not under 2320. Red line's at 2750, but static RPM, the most I'm going to get is 2470. The least, and so it gives you a range. So let's just look at this range. Why the range? Well, number one, the diameter. You can have some differences in diameter, but notice it doesn't say anything about the pitch in here. It's got to be 69 inch propeller, but not less than 70, uh, 67.5, which means that if you've lost some tippage there, um, you can do that. But there's this range of RPM because this is that climb prop I talked about, where you're going to get more horsepower because you have a higher RPM. Remember Plank? Right, okay, higher horsepower, more RPM, higher horsepower. So you're gonna get a little more horsepower out of this one on takeoff because you're gonna get higher RPM. But you're gonna go slower. This one over here, you're gonna lose a little horsepower, but once you're up and going, you're gonna get a little bit of speed. So you can, in fact, re-pitch a fixed pitch propeller. And I'll talk about that tomorrow because you guys are probably itching to go how that's done.